Okay, this is an implementation video for calculating the solubility of lead phosphate in low ionic strength water. The challenge in calculating the pH dependence to lead phosphate is that both phosphate and lead have acid base properties, and you need to include both of those effects in the calculation. There's a number of ways you can do this. I'm going to do it by first calculating the speciation of phosphate, saving the appropriate data, and then adding it to my spreadsheet where I calculate the speciation of lead and then combine the two into a single KSP expression. So let's begin by recognizing that phosphate has three pKa's, 2.15 K1, 7.2, that's the pK2, and 12.35, that's the pK3. So I put those here into my polyprotic acid input cells, and notice I have 35, 35, 35 in, in, uh, for pK4, 5, and 6, because phosphate is only a triprotic acid species. Second thing I need to recognize is that PO4, 3 minus is the species that's going to precipitate with lead, and so its fraction is represented by A3. Um, okay, so this number goes from a very small number at 1.98 times 10 to the minus 22 all the way up to 0.97 or 90%, 7% at uh, pH 14. Well, this is a computed value, and it will change as we change the pKa values in the pH. So what I'm going to do is grab it, edit, copy, and then I'm going to come over here where I've created a new cell called alpha PO4, and I'm going to go and paste special, edit, paste special. And in, when I paste special, I get some options, and I'm going to paste special not the formulas, but the values. Okay. Well, I've already done this in setting it up, so it's not a big surprise that I just pasted the same numbers on top of themselves. But notice that these now are numbers. I'm showing it up here in this in the um, formula bar. Okay, and it doesn't matter if I change these values. Uh, that alpha PO4 is preserved. Okay, so that's the first thing I need to do. Second thing I need to do is to actually calculate the concentration of phosphate. And I can do this because we're going to intentionally add phosphate to our drinking water model. And I've used the EPA recommended total phosphate concentration for corrosion prevention in water. So this is in units of molar. Uh, they recommend a concentration in ppm. And I have converted that one, uh, excuse me, yeah, one milligram per liter. I've converted that to molar, and that's 3.2 times 10 to the minus 5. So the phosphate concentration is then simply the alpha, which I've calculated, times the phosphate concentration. And you can see it's super low in acidic conditions because most of the phosphorus is in the protonated form, but it equals 3.13 times 10 to the minus 5 under alkaline conditions because in that case most of my phosphate is the fully dissociated PO4, 3 minus. Okay, check. We now have an estimate for phosphate concentration as a function of pH. So now we come over here and grab the three pKa values for lead. So this is the lead hydroxide, dihydroxide, and trihydroxide species. Paste them in, and notice the whole spreadsheet changes except that alpha doesn't for phosphate because I pasted it in as a fixed value. Okay, so no surprise here. Lead is mostly in the lead 3 plus, oh, excuse me, lead 2 plus form under acidic conditions, and it's mostly in the uh, trihydroxy species under alkaline conditions, and we have the intermediate forms at intermediate pHs. So, I now know the phosphate, I know the KSP, and uh, 
excuse me, the KSP for lead phosphate, it's super small, 3.9 times 10 to the minus 45. And then in column N, I calculate the KSP prime. Now, notice there are three leads in this solid phase. And so to convert total lead to lead 2 plus, I have to divide it by the alpha for the lead cubed. Because so I have to basically solve for lead 2 plus cubed. Okay, so my KSP is uh, the the KSP divided by the alpha cubed. And we'll hit return, and that gets pasted all the way down. And you'll notice it goes from a super small number to actually a pretty big number as we get out toward pH 14. And then finally, we can now calculate the total lead concentration. And the total lead concentration is going to require a little algebra. It's the KSP prime divided by the phosphate concentration squared, because there's two phosphates in here. Uh, and then you take the cube root of that, that whole thing. And that should be equal to the total lead concentration. There it is, and it starts off um, really high at acidic conditions, and that's because there's no phosphate. There's no PO4-3 minus at very acidic conditions, because it's the basic form. And it ends up really high um, because there's actually no lead 2 plus. It's all lead hydroxides at really high pH. But notice right here, the concentrations are super low. And this is why lead phosphate acts as a good corrosion inhibitor. Well, instead of looking at the numbers, let's look at the plot. Scroll across. And there we go. There is the predicted solubility of lead phosphate, that's the green curve, that's the solubility in terms of total lead plotted as a function of pH, very high under acidic conditions, very high under alkaline, very alkaline conditions, but right around pH 7 or 8, which is the pH of drinking water, um, we have a minimum, and that minimum is, again, on the order of 4 times 10 to the minus 9. To put that in perspective, the drinking water standard for, phos for lead is on the order of 2 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. This is 4 times 10 to the minus 9, so this should keep the lead concentrations below the drinking water standard by about a factor of 5 to 10. So that's good news. Now, of course, the reason we build these spreadsheets is to what if? What if we weren't to put in this concentration? What if we were to put in 10 times less? Okay. Let's assume we didn't add any phosphate or very little. So I'll just decrease this by a factor of 10. And I'll put my cursor here. That's where the solubility was. Hit return. Oh, boom. Now. Less phosphate, more lead, because you don't have that counter ion to precipitate it. And now my solubility, my minimum solubility, is on the order of 2 times 10 to the 8, which is exactly at the EPA drinking water standard. And of course, if I don't add any phosphorus or just use the background phosphorus in river water, now instead of being down here, it's way up here, and now I've got a problem, right? Now I've got concentrations that are on the order of 1 times 10 to the 7, which is five times the EPA drinking water recommendations. Now, it's important to recognize that in, in the case of Flint's water, um, there was more at play than just simple solubility. There was also redox chemistry and elemental lead was actually dissolving off of the pipes. But that dissolution process happened after the lead phosphate passivation layer was corroded away. Part of the reason it can corrode away is because we created a um, solution that was now undersaturated with respect 
to lead phosphate. Have a great day.